Hello everyone, this is John with Ziptopia.org. Today we are continuing our RFC 3261 simplified series with part 5. By the end of part 4, we were done with method independent processes on both user agent client and user agent server sides. In this tutorial, we will be going into details about the cancel method with examples to understand the concepts better. At this point, let's go ahead and run a quick test call between Tarzan and Jane to go over sample Wireshark screenshots in this tutorial. So on the right we have Jane's SIP phone registered to the asterisk now PBX. And on the left we have Tarzan's phone that is now registered to the asterisk now PBX. As you can see, we are also running a Wireshark instance here to capture the traffic. Now let's dial Jane to call Jane. As you can see, Jane's phone is ringing. So let's go back to Tarzan's phone and hang up. Perfect. We do see the cancel request there. If you scroll up a little, you'll see the invite request. For our call let's use the call id to filter this so that we only look at this call so we do see the cancel followed by request terminated followed by 200 ok and finally an ac request all right in this call tarzan has the extension 55555 and the ip address of 192.168.1.11 whereas the asterisk now pbx has the IP address of 192.168.1.16 similar to part 4 since asterisk now is a back-to-back -back user agent acting like user agent server of Jane we will be focusing only on the communication between Tarzan and the asterisk now pbx just for the record, Jane has the extension 4444, but the system allows users to call others by name, therefore Tarzan dialed Jane to reach Jane. Now it is worth noting that most of the details about the cancel request are simply logical conclusions one can come up with. Obviously, a cancel request is sent to cancel something and that something is a request being processed. There is no logic in sending a cancel request to cancel a request that is not being processed. How could a user agent client know if its request is being processed or not? By receiving provisional or final responses. Naturally, in order to cancel a request, the processing of the request should take longer than the time a user can hit whatever button they hit to cancel a request. Requests like register are processed too fast for a user to squeeze in a cancel request. Therefore, RFC 3261 recommends using cancel request with requests that take relatively longer to process. Keep in mind that there are other requests in the SIP world that were not covered in RFC 3261. As far as RFC 3261 is concerned, it is recommended to use cancel request with invite requests only. Why does it not make sense to use cancel request with quicker requests like register? Because the registration would be completed and the user agent client would receive a final response long before a user is able to even hit a button to try to cancel a register request. This late cancel would simply result in 481 call slash transaction doesn't exist response. So we have come to the conclusion that user agent client should be using cancel request to cancel invite requests. Now let's say we have a cancel request ready to be sent out and discuss when. 
But the short answer to the timing question is after a provisional response and before a final response. Going back to the logical conclusions, in an IP world, it is not uncommon to send IP packets A, B, C, D in that order and receive a completely different order of packets like D, A, C, B on the other end. Therefore, user agent client must know that the invite has been received before sending a cancel request to cancel it. Otherwise, cancel request may end up at the other end before the invite request does and the caller would fail to cancel the invite request. Instead, the caller would receive 481 call slash transaction does not exist response. This is why the cancel request must be sent after a provisional response. Well, a final response is, as the name implies, final. If a user agent client receives a final response to an invite request, sending a cancel request for that invite request will make no sense and the user agent client would receive 481 call slash transaction does not exist response. This is why the cancel request must be sent before a final request. Two important questions remain. How do we construct a cancel request? And how do we know if the cancel request was successful? First, let's take a look at the invite request from Tarzan's call. And this is the cancel request Tarzan sent to cancel the call. Let's go over the requirements while comparing the two screenshots. While the C sequence header field has the method cancel, the number should match the C sequence header field number of the invite request. Similarly, the two from call ID and request URI header field values must match between the invite request and the cancel request. Additionally, if the invite request had route header field entry or entries, they must be present in the cancel request as well. Moreover, the top via header field from the invite request should also be added to the cancel request as the only via header field. Cancel requests are handled hop by hop instead of the endpoints of an initiated call. Therefore, using only one via header field makes sense. At this point, these requirements make sure the user agent server matches the correct invite request to cancel and allow us to answer the how do we construct a cancel request question. Moving on to the how do we know if the cancel request was successful question, the short answer is either by receiving 487 request terminated response or not receiving a final response to the invite request for 64 multiplied by T1 seconds. Obviously, if a user agent client sends a cancel request and receives a 487 request terminated response, the invite request was successfully canceled. However, 487 request terminated was not a part of the previous session initiation protocol RFC 2543. Therefore, if a user agent server is functioning based on RFC 2543, it may not send back 487 request terminated after it terminates the invite request. Well, it also will not send back a final response for the cancelled invite request. RFC 3261 suggests the UAC wait for 64 multiplied by T1 seconds, where T1 is a timer value we will be covering in following tutorials. And if no final response has been received for the invite request targeted, the user agent client should consider the invite request 
cancelled and remove its transaction. Alright, we send the cancel request, now what? First of all, if the cancel request is received by a stateless C proxy, as we mentioned earlier, it would forward the cancel request. A stateful C proxy, on the other hand, could respond to the cancel request and send out a cancel request of its own. Finally, the user agent server responds to the cancel request. In the scenario where a back-to-back -back user agent resides between Tarzan and Jane, the back-to-back -back user agent is a user agent server for Jane. This sample call leg between Tarzan and the asterisk now PBX demonstrates this behavior by asterisk now PBX sending 487 request terminated response. The back-to-back -back user agent also sends 200 OK for accepting the cancel request. Finally, the user agent client sends ACK request to finalize the three-way handshake behavior we discussed in RFC 3261 Simplified Series Part 1. Let's take a step back and think about what user agent server, in this case the back-to-back -back user agent, does when it receives a cancel request. Earlier, we went through the requirements for the user agent client to construct a cancel request to match a specific invite request. Naturally, the user agent server uses these entries to try to match an already existing transaction. If an existing transaction does not match the cancel request, the user agent server sends 481 call slash transaction does not exist response. Either the user agent client is hallucinating or more possibly the respective transaction already resulted in the production of a final response and there is nothing left to cancel. If an existing transaction matches the cancel request, user agent server checks to see if a final response has been sent for this transaction. If there was already a final response sent out, similar to the previous scenario, the respective transaction already resulted in a production of a final response and there is nothing left to cancel. Finally, if an existing transaction matches the cancel request, user agent server checks to see if a final response has been sent for this transaction and if there was no final response sent out, user agent server should immediately send 487 request terminate the response and remove the transaction. User agent server also sends back 200 OK to indicate that it accepted the cancel request. So in this tutorial we have covered the cancel request from both user agent client and user agent server sides. The next tutorial will be about the register request. If you have any questions or comments about this tutorial, please let us know. Thank you.